securing A. This one's dead. Colorblind is kind of necessary for some players using it for a more vivid look at the world. Name tag, you'll be seeing a yellow name tag, and that's what that's for. Mini map shape is square because it you just see so more much more of the map. Green set up scroll full screen borderless or windows or anything that just destroys my computer. Um, sometimes it runs really well on full screen borderless, but it's just not consistent enough for me, and I get more frames off full screen. Um, screen refresh, whatever you can put it up to. You sync every frame, I turn it off. I do not use it because it gives me input lag and it feels very unnatural. I leave this alone. Lights, Nvidia reflex low latency and keep on so that I my game is consistent with audio uh, I use boost low I used to use to boost high and I use boost and before that I was using dynamic home theater and I would recommend dynamic for console but honestly it's all up to experimenting and how it feels for you I and boost and boost low are the uh, essential parts of this game uh, I keep at master volume and effects at 100 so I can hear footsteps 100%. Music volume is zero so I can hear more. Dialogue 40 so I can hear airstrikes and all that, but not so loud that I can't hear anything around me. Um, hit marker sounds classic because I love the sound of the classic ones. You'll find out the difference when you uh, experiment with it. Um, I don't know about mono audio. I don't know if I want to use it, but you can experiment with that. The uh, rest of it doesn't really matter. On uh, voice chat. Some of them don't work when you have an open mic threshold that's too high. So if you might want, you might want to turn it lower so people can hear you. There are some really important um, settings in here. The first ones I want to show you all the way at the bottom: list, automatic, technical sprint, and tap and slide behavior. Because you cannot use one without the other efficiently. So automatic technical sprint is the fastest you can run in this game, and you can only slide cancel when you are running so when you're running your fastest consistently without having to press extra buttons that's the goal um i keep off my parachute auto deploy off so i can hit the floor faster and it's going to be a big learning curve for you these these last five uh these last five um settings are going to be big learning curves so fair warning um contextual tap is also if you played without it you're gonna feel really off this is for a console and pc um you're gonna want this so you can close doors open doors um pick up guns reload faster and uh without holding the button um equipment behavior for like bombs and uh heartbeat sensors you're gonna want to use this for hold um this i'll show you steady aim after uh later um scale aim assist for field of view I don't really know if it's necessary, but I do it anyway. Aim is standard um, controller vibration off because this game has too many vibrations for you to aim straight when your, your hands are shaking like every two seconds. Um, dynamic aim responsive curve. It's it's like it's the best of both worlds with standard and linear. And I just feel better with it, and it's all in the preference in sensitivities. The normal thing you would go by is like I don't know six uh, six dead zone or seven dead zone uh, six six on your vertical and horizontal stick sensitivity and your multipliers would be at like 80 to 85 and you'll just tamper with that and figure out what you need to do with that for yourself um, so you can do your best in the game and uh, for my people that do not own three hundred thousand dollar controllers um, you'll want to this specifically tactical button layout preset so that you can use your aiming button to also move your aim and slide cancel at the exact same time so you can move and shoot and you will end up right here every time like if I'm standing here you will end up on this side because that's just how far you get to slide and your your sliding will coincide with your centering and your sensitivity settings so I recommend you find out what those are before you go crazy with the movement and practice makes perfect but just don't push yourself to insanity another really advanced movement is bunny hopping you're gonna jump jump look left and aim at the same time 
Okay, so this is this is an example. You won't get it right every single time, but it's great to practice. Imagine what it looks like on the other person's screen, and it breaks cameras and aim assist so hard that it will take multiple people to take you down, and even then, if they do not know how to shoot straight, they will not hit you. That's really important, really important part of movement. If you have no centering within that movement, you will not be able to use this. Also, specifically because of us controller players that do not have $300,000 to um, you won't be able to jump and aim at the same time. So you're going to have to jump and flick. Fair warning, fair warning about that. Um, Another thing about movement, for slide kids specifically, there are many uses for it. It's breaking cameras, moving around the map fast, confusing your enemy, getting the aim on the pull up your gun before they can, because it's basically sliding. Slide kids is basically the equivalent of standing still and aiming in. It's really fast. And when you run into an aim, right, so it, it'll be fairly the same, like this. But when you run into an aim, It'll turn into a really big delay, and you will die before you even get the first bullet off. So, I recommend slide canceling everywhere you go, as fast as you possibly can. Now, if you have a really slow gun, it's relative, but it's really more for the fast guns, but you still want to practice it with every single gun that you use, no matter what. So, another great thing about it is you get to move around the map faster, because tactical sprint with your gun up like this will be the fastest you can run around the map and when you slide cancel twice not lay on the floor you slide cancel twice you'll be able to reset it so the reason the way you'll see that it's reset is that your gun will be down here like this. slide cancel twice and then it's back to the way it was basically centering which is keeping this white dot in the middle of your screen throughout the entire map and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your aim is around this red dot to his neck because that's where the player model is going to be sitting and it's basically keeping your your uh, aim relative to your head level that it doesn't look too far up or too far down making sure that it's in the middle here so that when you roll around a corner it'll just be locked on to his head basically, basically. recoil Control, which is a big part of aiming. A lot of people don't know how to do it, and that's fine. If you like using one gun, and you want to get better at using that one gun, you're going to want to use this right here. You're going to want to use this tactic right here. You're going to be using the exact um, butt bullet pattern that it makes, and you're going to be replicating that with that. So you're going to be using the exact same ladder and you're going to be going down and left because it pulls up to the right and sits there a little bit and goes straight up so you're gonna you're just gonna pull down like relative to what this is you're going to do the reverse of it and that's how you control this rainbow Amos just plays into it a little bit but it's not the end of the world Also, a big part that uh, really sums all that up is sensitivity to the point that you can control it without barely moving your finger on the game. And that's what will make the difference between you winning a fight and losing it. Setting on head glitches like this to where all you can see is your hand and your gun and there's nothing else that the other person can see. So if there was somebody right there and I was to sit here they would see maybe my forehead here, and then I would come up, and all they can see is my head. That's what a head glitch is, and it's specifically used for positioning and making sure that you can 
take out that person without getting hurt too much. So for this, you're going to be using crouch over and over again. This is called snaking. And you go on a head glitch and all they can see is your head popping up over and over again. I recommend using a uh, faster gun for this so you can strafe. We'll get to strafing soon. So you're going to be strafing left and right and up and down with this. It's going to make it really hard for them to hit you. And this is basically for just grabbing information about who's around you and who you're going to be fighting. Well, who, if they're pushing this way, kind of aim yourself over here. If they're pushing left, they coming up right next to you, like right here. Are they running around? It's just all for information. And you can also use it while shooting. You can also jump shot, where you can just jump over a head glitch and do this. You can also do this in the middle of a close-up fight. You just have to have really good centering for it. And um, aim assist also plays into it, but it's not insane. Now, strafing is really important because with the, I would only recommend doing this with um, guns that are really hard to control weak on. And if you need to learn how to do it, um, I suggest you make it a good habit because it's a great habit to have shooting any gun. So strafing would be walking left and right as fast as you possibly can to keep the recoil low and keep yourself moving in a fight. Because if you're not into the jumping around and sliding around like a crazy person, world star and people, you're just gonna you're just gonna strafe left and right while shooting. And it will make all the difference in the world in a lot of different fights.